Okay, welcome to the uh, NUPOC video study guide number 56. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at question 44 in uh, the uh, math section of guide 2. And, you know, this is kind of, I would almost say, sort of like a physics problem or, a, um, of course, you know, most physics problems are, are math anyways, but, uh, you, know, uh, you know, this is more like a, a statics or materials or something like that. Um, we're basically being asked to find the y coordinate of the center of mass of this uh, this uh, this geometry, this shape, um, and we're given that it has uh, uniform uh, uniform density uh, rho. Um, I should put that there. Okay, so um, I guess you know you could you know typically the way you would do it right is um, you would have some sort of a density function and you would integrate that. Um, uh, you know, uh, throughout the geometry, sort of do like a volume integral with the, you know, if you may have a density gradient and different directions and whatnot. Um, but here we have uniform density, so we can uh, we can just sort of say, okay, well, you know, we've got uh, uh, uniform density in this area and that area, and we can just sort of, um, instead of integrating, you know, we've got these nice defined, uh, you know, shapes, rectangular shapes, so we can just kind of go and you know, multiply width times height times depth, and multiply by rho to get the mass, and and then just figure out where the where the center is in 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 any uh, coordinate direction. Um, so, anyways, so I don't know whether this this video will be under <laughs> integral calculus. I mean, sometimes you would use that method, but uh, we're not going to do it here, or maybe physics. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I guess if you're watching it, uh, you know where it ended up. Um, I don't know, maybe the general math section or something. But anyways, so we're going to do this the way the solution does it, and that's the method of component parts, All right, where we just kind of split this shape into um, some kind of easy to compute, uh, uh, you know, or easy to deal with shapes, um, and then we basically just say uh, <clears throat> that the total mass of the object uh, times um, the total, the you know, the y bar or the the center of, of mass in the y uh, direction um, is equal to, you know, m uh, m1. So you know the mass of the first section um, times y bar one times m2 uh, y bar two plus uh, you know, and you go up to however many um, <coughs> uh, m. Let's say m n. Uh, y bar and however many uh, sections you break it up into. Um, so here we're just going to break it up into two sections. So we'll just have this. Uh, we'll just have this little uh, formula here. Okay. Um, so uh, one of the interesting things, though, is, of course, you know, you could really have almost any any coordinate, any y coordinate for the center of mass, because, well, to be frank, they don't really, um, you know, there's no given. Um, no given uh, coordinate system, right? Um, so uh, what we'll do is we'll just we'll just take the uh, coordinate system uh, that's given in the solution so that we can match them. Uh, and of course, you know you don't know, uh, know what what uh, orientation the coordinate uh, uh, system has or anything like that. I mean, I think I did this first without looking at the solution, and you know my <laughs> my solution was uh, was way off from uh, what the manual had. And, uh, of course, they were both valid. We just sort of chose different frames of reference, right? So what we'll do is we'll kind of go uh, halfway up uh, on this, um, in this back corner here. Of course, it doesn't really matter what corner you're in. The point is you're, you, you choose the origin to be uh, about half uh, 1A. Uh, so you have A to one side, right? Because this dimension is A and this dimension is A. 1A above the origin and 1A uh, below the origin. And then let's take this to be our x hat direction, this to be our y hat direction, and this to be our uh, z hat direction, and that'll follow the uh, right hand rule, right? Um, okay. So if we do that, and then we split into two composite parts, this kind of becomes fairly easy, right? So we'll have one component part. I'm going to draw it a little bit smaller here to save space, and um, you know it kind of looks like this. It's it's sort of the, and again, you could choose any two parts you want. You could choose this big sort of 
block here and then this little narrow one on the side, but again, we'll follow the solutions just so you can compare with that. I guess it's a little bit simpler. Consider if we wanted to do that, we would maybe want to put our coordinate over here, or our, our origin over here or something, or do something else wacky and maybe choose a, you know, this to be the Y direction or, or something, right? And um, get creative and, and whatnot to keep the solution simple. Um, but anyway, so this is the top. So this is A in this direction. Excuse me. Make sure I draw a good arrow there. Uh, and this is L in this direction. And then this is uh, now L minus A. Right? And, uh, and the, this Y center of mass, right, uh, is going to be, right, here's the origin. And we're looking in the Y direction. So the center of mass, is, since we have uniform mass, is, is just at, uh, so we'll call this y bar 1, is at uh, a over 2, all right? And then uh, our second um, section is just a little bit bigger. And this is sort of the bottom slab, right? So uh, it also has a height of a. and except it also has a depth of L and a, a uh, width of L here. And of course the origin here is, uh, is at the top, right? Um, and so we could, uh, we could say that here the, the Y coordinate, uh, the center of mass, is at, uh, so this will be uh, Y bar 2 equals uh, minus A over 2, right? Okay. Um, so now if we go ahead, and of course we know here um, that M, right, M1 is just rho uh, <coughs> A L times L minus A, and of course M2 equals, uh, let's see, L squared A times rho, of course, rho L squared A, right? Okay. So uh, now let's go ahead and... Um, kind of plug into this equation here, right? So we have the, the uh, well, let's just go ahead and, and say here, we'll just kind of move the mass to the other side first, the total mass, right? So we'll end up with something like y bar equals uh, m1, which is uh, rho a l l minus a, um, <clears throat> y1, which is a over 2, um, plus rho l squared a, uh, times uh, y2, which is uh, minus a over 2, right? And this is all over uh, the total mass, uh, which is uh, rho, <coughs> and then add, sort of, we're taking the rho, it's just m1 plus m2, um, and that'll be, uh, let's see, uh, a, we'll kind of distribute this here, a l squared uh, minus a squared l, plus a l squared, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, if we go ahead and kind of simplify the top here, we will end up, I'm gonna kind of, just to save space, I'm gonna come way out here. Um, so we can say now, on, we, well, first of all, <clears throat> what we can do is we can cancel a, a row, you know, it's uniform density, so let's get rid of this row everywhere. Um, and then, you know, we'll have on top here, it looks like we have, um, let's do this negative one first. So we have, um, we have negative L squared, A squared. Um, and I'm going to kind of take the one half out, out front. I'm going to multiply uh, through what I'm done here. Um, plus, plus, oh, well, let's do this minus one first. Minus looks like A cubed. Uh, times L, right, that's this term right here, and it looks like here we're going to have a plus, um, let's see, A squared, L squared, and all this is going to be over 2, right, and, um, and that's going to be um, uh, multiplied by one over uh, this whole thing here. Um, and this this is, of course, um, let's see, this is, uh, uh, 
let's see, this is 2, it's going to be 2 AL squared minus A squared L, right? Okay, so right away we can see that we can get rid of this uh, plus A squared L squared minus A squared L squared, right? And uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and multiply these two together. And so what we end up with is uh, y bar, right, is uh, minus a cubed l over 4al squared minus 2a squared l. Okay? Now, <clears throat> do a couple things here. Uh, number one is we can get rid of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, we can get rid of the uh, uh, the L, right? And get rid of that one L there. And we can get rid of, uh, we can get rid of an A, right? Uh, this will go to a squared and we'll get rid of that, right? So what we end up with is, uh, let's see, a Y bar equals, uh, let's see, minus squared over uh, 4 minus uh, let's see 4L excuse me 4L minus 2A okay and uh, and so a couple of things to note um, It does differ slightly that, uh, from what's in the solution. Uh, I want to make sure this is clear. This is a 4L minus 2A, right? Um, you know, so in the solution, I think, first of all, they have, a, they have a positive here. And, you know, they may have actually taken, perhaps they took their, their Y hat and put it in the other direction here. That might be, um, that might be a reason for that. Um, I think that would that would cause this to be positive, uh, y hat, or y bar to be positive here. Um, and the other thing is too, they sort of uh, leave out this l, and um, I'm not sure. I think they wrote them as ones, so I think they sort of went to the slightly less general case where l, um, uh, where where l is just assumed to be one. Um, but those are just uh, sort of trivial differences. But anyways, that's just a quick walkthrough of how to. Um, <coughs> How to uh, sort of apply the method of uh, component parts um, for finding the uh, you know center of mass um, for pretty basic geometric shapes, especially when you have uniform density, it makes it very easy. And if you didn't have uniform density and you had some sort of density function given, you could sort of just integrate that density function. Um, uh, I believe you could integrate the density function over the different component parts um, uh, if you knew the density functions inside them, and then apply the method of uh, component parts again. So. Anyways, that's about that.